Hi guys, my name is Valentina Palladino for our second guide. Today I'm here with... The DJI Spark. So this little guy is DJI's smallest and cheapest drone. It weighs just above a half pound and it's priced at $499. Professional videographers, drone enthusiasts, people like that. This might not be as powerful as you would want as something like the DJI Phantom or the Mavic Pro, but for people who haven't really tried a drone or flown a drone before, this little guy might strike the right balance of fun and functionality to kind of convert those people to being drone pilots. So let's take a look at the specs. The propellers on the Spark don't fold in on themselves like other drones do, but since this is already so compact, it doesn't really need to do that. And the Spark shoots 1080p video and the camera is mounted on a two axis gimbal. So for reference, the DJI Mavic Pro shoots 4K video and the camera is mounted on a three axis gimbal. So the Spark will travel at top speed of 31 miles per hour and one of its batteries will last for about 16 minutes of flight. And for reference, the Mavic Pro on one battery can last for about 21 minutes of flight. So the coolest thing about the Spark is gesture control. This is where you can use your hand and your face to move it around and it'll follow you, kind of like, you know, the Jedi control type thing. It uses that bar in the front of its nose, that's the 3D vision sensor, to identify your face and your palm so it knows who you are, it can keep you as a point of reference, and it'll use your palm to see where it needs to go next. So you can move it from side to side, up and down, or forward and away from you, that kind of thing. And there are even some more advanced gestures that can move it really far away from you, and some that can let you take a selfie just by moving your hands in a certain way. As you can see, gesture control can be a little finicky. You need to have your palm and your face at least two and a half feet away from the drone for it to actually recognize you and for those LEDs to turn green and so you know you can actually do a gesture and it'll go through. And also some of the gestures won't be available in what's called beginner mode, which is kind of a safer mode if you haven't really flown a drone before. So if you go into the DJI GO app and disable beginner mode and also enable backward flight, which makes the drone fly backwards on its own, and enable advanced gesture control, then all the gestures will be available to you. Gesture control does take some finessing. Even when I had all of my settings perfectly aligned for gesture control, sometimes it would take a really long time for these little LEDs to kind of all go green and that would signal me that the drone was ready to really listen to my gestures. You also have to remember to be out of beginner mode in the DJI GO app because that kind of restricts what you can do. And you also have to enable backwards flying and advanced gesture control to get all of the gestures to work. There are a few kind of advanced gestures. If you wave goodbye, the spark will kind of move further away from you. And if you hold your fingers in this little box, kind of like this little box formation, and then move it out, it will take a selfie automatically. And those were really cool when they worked, but they didn't work all the time. So you really have to position yourself exactly correctly to get gesture control to work as planned. Another really cool feature are quick shots, and these are automated flight tracks that the Spark can go on and automatically take video as it does so. So they're pretty complicated movements that would be really hard for you to actually do for yourself on either the virtual joysticks or on the RC remote. To get them that smooth, it would be pretty hard. So there are four quick shots, and they're really cool because they just take those automated shots for you. You don't really have to put any effort into it. But the quick shots do have the drone going pretty far away from you pretty quickly. And it's a little bit nerve wracking, I have to say. Um, we had a crash and it was a little bit scary, but the drone was came out of that crash pretty much intact for the most part. But you do have to kind of be careful with quick shot mode. Another thing that's not particularly related to quick shot mode, but it could be, is the weather conditions. So I was really nervous flying this drone in the wind or any kind of like gusts of wind because it's so small and so light that I was afraid it was gonna get taken away. Most of the time it did not. I never really had a, a time where the drone was completely overcome by wind, but you can definitely see when it's hovering in place, 
that's kind of fighting the gusts of the wind if it's particularly windy outside, like it is a little bit right now. So you do want to be careful and you can always have it returned to home from the Inside the Go app whenever you want it to. Aside from its really small size, one of the most convenient things about the Spark is that you can control it directly within the DJI Go app, so you only need a smartphone or a tablet or any kind of device that can open up that app. So this is the DJI Go app, and this is where you can control the Spark. This is the primary controller. You can buy an RC remote that's extra if you want that tactile experience, but there are these virtual joysticks, see right here, that can move the Spark up and down, from side to side. Uh, just like you would with a regular remote, but everything is right in the app. And I really enjoyed using these joysticks. Even for someone like me that doesn't really use drones that often, these were really easy and very stable to use. And the drone itself is pretty stable while using them. This is the return to home button. This is the launch button. Here we have the different modes you could do, which is normal, which is using the virtual joysticks, gesture control, active track, where it'll follow you quick shot where you can choose a bunch of those quick shots and a couple of other ones as well. And up here we have the general settings. Now there's a bunch of general settings in here you can go through and just kind of battery level is low. The aircraft ah. will go to the home point in 10 seconds. So landing. You're gonna get this alert when the battery level is low. I set mine to be when the battery level is about uh, 20 or 15 percent. Um, and as you can see that right there, it'll show you the battery of the drone itself. And here it'll just come back to home when the battery is super low, so at least you don't have to worry about that. And that's it landing. You can always tell it to return to home and land whenever you want in the middle of a shot or anything. But when the battery is low, it will just return to home by itself. Over here you have the adjustment of the gimbal and you can also switch between um, video mode and photo mode. In photo mode you can take pano photos um, and in video mode you can just take video of um, any of the shots while you're controlling the drone yourself. But in quick shot it'll automatically take video which is pretty cool. So the Spark may be a really tiny drone but that also means a quite a tiny battery life. So one battery will last for about 16 minutes of flight and that really doesn't get you very far. It definitely isn't going to last you a day when you're out with your friends at the beach or with your family at the park. You will have to recharge up and probably a couple of times unless you get extra batteries. I had three batteries that I was using that I could switch out at any time and it lasted me about 45 minutes to an hour of flying the Spark. That is really disappointing because it does limit what you can do with this. You can't go out for an entire day and expect to get an entire day's worth of use, but it's so small that's kind of what you have to accept. DJI did try to make it a little bit easier for you to charge up on the go and they have this little micro USB port in here so you can charge it via that. However, it will take 80 minutes to charge the battery while it's in the drone using the micro USB port. So it's gonna take a little while, even if you do wanna charge it when you're out. So the DJI Spark is super fun, and it's undeniably cool that you can use your palm to control it and get that kind of Jedi control thing. Everyone's made the same tired joke about it, but it's really true. It is fun to control something this little but this powerful with just the movement of your hands when it works properly. But because of its portability and its low price, it's not gonna be as powerful as something like the Mavic Pro, which is $1,000 and it is a little bit bigger. Before the Spark, it was the smallest DJI drone um, and it shoots better video, it flies faster and it has a slightly better battery life. So if you're someone who really takes your drone seriously but still wanna have that portability factor, the Mavic Pro is probably better for you. But for anyone who really is just a new drone enthusiast, someone who's really curious about this, or you just want to take really cool family videos and photos with your friends and kind of show off a little bit of what the newest technology can do, the Spark is definitely the drone to get.